not my radio oh, show. Yes! It's not my radio show. I can't back and ask that, man. This is your radio show. I knew if I waited long enough, he'd jump in. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, people couldn't see there. We were having a Mexican standoff. I was uh, waving towards Tony. He's like, go on, Tony. No, you back and answer. Thank go God on. this is not TV. <laughs> You back and answer. No, no, you, you back and answer. It's your show. Go on, it doesn't matter. You're in here. People want to hear your voice. Yeah, it's your show. <laughs> They'll hear me enough in a moment. <laughs> they will indeed. That was, of course, you too. And that, that remix, you get it on the free CD with Q Magazine. Uh, Jacques Leconte, I think, mm -hmm. is the man who remixed it. Very nice. It is magnificent. I was supposed to play Tinsel Town is in the Rain because Tony was coming in. And Tinsel Town is in the Rain by the Blue Nile is a very special song for you. And it is. I time. actually played it yesterday afternoon on the show. And uh, when I back announced it, I, I, uh, I, uh, whenever time, any time I hear Tinsel Town of the Ring, I think of you, me, and Paul Buchanan from the band. And a and, uh, gentle night we had at one night. So yesterday on the show, I mentioned the fact that uh, you and I and Paul Buchanan went out for a very gentle, very, very gentle, casual beer one day. And we didn't get home till the next afternoon. The next afternoon yeah. we arrived. I mean, I, I can't blame you enough in this. I can't <laughs> incriminate you enough. I was, I was, it was a Sunday afternoon. You were very young back then, Tom. I slipped out <laughs> to You could see. be con easily controlled. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped out to see a football match. Yes, that's And right. you were having a drink, and I sat there with very uh, ostentatiously with an orange drink in front of me. Because yeah. I don't drink on a Sunday Not afternoon, at all. Tony. Not at you all. know that. Yes, of course. And then Mark Hughes scored that wonder goal against yes. Oldham that kept United in the FA Cup. Yeah. And I looked at you and said, we'll do the double now. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was your round. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I think that I think actually I will have a double. <laughs> and that was at a night of yeah. untold Fantastic debauchery. Night. Yeah, great night. That nearly got Paul Buchanan from the Blue Nile. Almost had him singing in the karaoke in uh, Johnny Fox. Johnny Fox is t in the tallest, uh, the highest pub in the, in the in the land. Yeah. Oh, look, uh, Tom, great night, wonderful memories, and uh, I mean, I, I'll never forget you getting up there doing your Elvis Presley impressions. Thank God, my name wasn't called out of the hat. <laughs> well, as you're the one who wrote my name on 300 pieces of paper, Tony. Yes, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, very. It's lovely to have you. And I think it's the first time I've ever actually interviewed you. Yeah, I've interviewed you, of course, yeah, uh, when you're a member of something happens, but uh, tables have turn slightly here so it's it's, it's always uh, I mean I, and I interview quite a lot of guests but it's always very very different and, and slightly scary it is, the other it? side of the, uh, of the table being yeah. interviewed yeah. it's weird and uh, funny uh, uh, the more interviewing you do mm -hmm. the more uncomfortable it becomes to be interviewed mm -hmm. you feel completely like a fish out of water yeah. and uncomfortable but uh, you know why we were talking today you've had you've had a, a tough uh, 18 months really well a you? tough a tough six or seven um, in no uh, about uh, an 11 11 months ago, my mother passed away of breast cancer, it. and while she was going through all of that, the last couple of weeks of her life, my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer, and when we buried mum, uh, two weeks later, I realized I had a malignant melanoma, skin cancer. The yeah. two most fo common forms of cancer a man can have are skin cancer and prostate cancer, and I had both in, in about four months. It's a strange thing, but when people tune in every day to a radio show, mm -hmm. they have this sense of a person just talking to them, and uh, and what they know of that person is just enthusiasm and, and loving of, of music I and mean, a great people person to them. And uh, the sense of a real person behind that is sometimes very hard for them to take on board. Mm -hmm. And for that person to be ill or something is something they find quite hard to get their head around because it yeah. doesn't really seem like a real person to yeah. them. Yeah, and, no, and, and while I was going through all of that, in and out of hospital about 20 times between December of last year and uh, March, April, May, June of this year, uh, the real outlet for me... Uh, to get away from the darkness and the stress of all of that was do a radio show. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're not your thoughts aren't anything except uh, the music and communicating and broadcasting. Uh, and then when you leave the building, all all the rest of the returns, the returns, the darkness returns. Yeah, it does. Yeah. God. Um, how your sister has that? She's fine. She's great. I was only speaking to her while I was waiting to come into the studio, and she's in great form. She's uh, finished all her all her therapy, and uh, she's a happy girl now. Oh, thank, thank God. God for so that. that's going to come through thank great. I mean, your world turned upside down. Yeah, it was... All your touchdowns. Yeah, it, it, you know, what? when you're... Nobody nobody wants to hear... When you sit across from your doctor, your GP, or a consultant, 
the last words you want to hear from your doctor is that you've got some form of cancer. It's just, you don't hear anything else when he tells you that. And, uh, and I was diagnosed with mel malignant melanoma cancer, which, uh, was... How did that cry How did you know about it? I had a mole on my leg. It yeah. was, it was as simple as that. And it was always there. Uh, and about, uh, six months before my mother passed away, I went down to my GP just for a checkup. And, uh, I said to him, can you have a look at this mole? And, uh, is, it, tell me that it's okay. Cause mm. I think it's okay. Okay. And uh, he confirmed that it was fine. He showed me photographs of moles that had gone bad. Mm. And he said, look, yours is not like any of these, but if it changes in any way, come in and let me know. And about two weeks after my mother passed away in December, I dropped in to see him. And uh, he said, I said, look, I'm, I'm not happy about this. I, I think it's changed slightly. Can you do anything about it or any, mm. any advice? And he said, like, yeah, I think it's, I think it's changed. Let's, let's take it off. And uh, so we moved pretty quickly quickly on this uh i asked him would he book me in straight away mm -hmm. uh because did at that point had he used the the, the c word had he said no hadn't i hadn't mentioned it was just that. better safe than sorry better let's let's just find out let's yeah. just take it off and find out and uh n normally what they would do is that they they would look we'll get in touch with you mm -hmm. we'll organize a date for you to drop in but i wasn't waiting and the trick is to just say to your uh, your gp right there and then can you make the call now to a consultant so I can make the meeting in the morning or yeah. the next day and move fast is the trick instead of waiting for him mm -hmm. to email you or contact yeah. you a couple of weeks later and I got in the next day mm -hmm. they and, and they took it off the next day yeah. and uh, uh, two or three days later they came back and said yeah true enough it's uh, malignant and uh, and then you've got to go see a consultant but I moved pretty quickly is that to go and see a consultant to see if it's spread yeah to it, see when, it, when it's taken out it's not an all clear straight no away. not at all and uh, then they, they've got to do loads of scans and loads of tests and uh, make sure it hasn't gone into a gland or anything yeah. like that so I was in and out of hospital about worried 20 sick. times worried sick not being able to sleep of course darkness uh, descends and and you think the worst yeah and uh, and uh, so I literally pushed very fast mm. on everything. Every time I met a consultant and we said, we've come back to you in a couple of weeks, out came my phone and went, okay, well, I'm free all of next week or I'm free tomorrow. Yeah. Can we do this tomorrow? Right. And a lot of them were kind of, okay, if you come here early, 7 o'clock in the morning, I'll get you in. Okay. And you're pushing it all yeah. the time, pushing, pushing. Driving it, really. Yeah. Literally, you're taking care of yourself yeah. because if you were to wait for them, you'd be there forever, you know. Did, did you... Um Kind of, you're on a list as well. Yeah. If you weren't, mm. if you weren't on VHI, it's it's you're, different. Yeah, it is completely. a different. It's life or death, isn't it? It is. Yes. It's it really worrying. It is. It is. I. I. Uh, my mother wasn't on VHI, and uh, the last four or five weeks, or the last four or five months of her life, were just terrible. Oh God. Um, was there a period between getting the all clear and then going for your your prostate? Yeah. Test? I mean, I got the all clear after uh, I think it was February, March, beginning of March, and that was wonderful. Uh, because you're out playing football again, playing yeah. golf again, you're back working again. Which he's very good at, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're not so bad at the soccer you yourself, Tom. <laughs> Tommy Two Touch. You Tommy, I used to call you Tommy Two Touch. <laughs> uh, it's a footballing term. <laughs> Nobody will know what that means, and I kind of might have to explain that. You want to to get the ball under control, you need to kind of take it one touch. Professionals take yeah. one touch to have the ball under control so they can pass. But Tom took. Two touches, maybe even three to get the ball in. Or the four, <laughs> sometimes, or five. So, um, yeah. yeah, so lucky, I mean, I got the all clear. It was fantastic around yeah. about March. Happy I mean, they, they went in and took a bit more out, and they came back and said, yeah, we've got it all out completely, you're right. fine. You know, come back to see us in a year's time or whatever. Uh, good luck now, Tony. Take care and enjoy your life. And uh, and that's that was beginning of March. And I, I like your 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 life is a lot brighter at that stage. Yeah. And I went in for a GP, just a checkup in the beginning of June. Just random, just random. Went in, said, uh, "Look, you know, I, I went in to get uh, I get I get got my ears syringed actually. <laughs> uh, good thing for a DJ. Sorry, a good thing for. <laughs> sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I got my ears syringed, and uh, I just said to him, "Look, you know," uh, he says to me, "Look, oh, you're you're turning fifty very soon, and could you? Well, let's take a blood test. Let's take a mm -hmm. PSA test, which is a prostate blood test." And I'd never heard of that before. 
So he took his blood sample from my arm, took 20 seconds, no pain whatsoever. And uh, a week later, he called me in. He says, a little bit high. It's 2.9. Right. Now, I didn't know that if that was 2.9 out of 3, or yeah. 2.9 out of 10, or out yeah. of 1,000. Seemed very low to me. Yeah. And uh, he said, look, it, you know, it should be below 1. Right. So let's come back in six months and see where it goes to then. And this it, is where 99% of the population goes... Okay, I'll see you in six months. Exactly. And every man I've talked to uh, does the same thing. They come back in six months' time. And that's, I think, for me, the wrong thing to do because you are in control of your own health. Mm -hmm. If you come back in six months and it goes up a little higher, now, PSA levels can go up and they can come down. It doesn't necessarily okay. mean you've got prostate cancer at 2.9 or 7.5. Yeah. You know, I've had friends where it's been up that high and it's okay. gone all the way back down and it'd be fine. Okay. So the, the, there is a case yeah. for coming back in six months' time, but I really wanted to take control of, of my own health. So I asked him, how do you know for sure? I, yeah. If I'm okay or not. If I come back in six months' time and it's 3.1, uh, how do we know for sure yeah. if I've got prostate cancer or not? And he went, the only way you know is if you have a biopsy. And I went, well, okay, book me, for, book me in a one tomorrow morning. A painful thing, isn't it, a biopsy? Not really, no? because you're asleep when it happens. Okay. And, uh, and I had mine done two days later. Yeah at half seven in the morning, and I was out of the hospital at quarter past eight, and I was on the radio that day. Not so, a bother. Not a bother at all. So, uh, the only way to find out for sure, because I didn't want to go... the results from that. Yeah, I that didn't want to, but I didn't want to go through a six months waiting yeah. and not be able to sleep for six yeah. months, and then the stress builds up, mm -hmm. and then all the thoughts and the questions, yeah. do I have it, don't I have it, what's wrong with me, am I okay? I didn't want to go through any of that. So, um, I had a biopsy, and they came back positive. You have cancer. You've got prostate cancer. Again? Yeah. Wow. What went through your head then? Devastated. I, when you're told that you can't, you, you don't hear anything that's, that your consultant is telling you. It's just complete silence. Your, your world is t turned upside down. Um, I remember just looking at him and he was talking to me, but I couldn't hear him. And I think they always ask you to bring in somebody with you yeah. uh, when you go to see a consultant, purely for that reason, because they, they're hearing it. Yeah. You're not hearing it. And when you leave... You're in shock. You're in shock. And then all, you've got all these questions you want to ask the consultant, but you've already left, and it probably takes you yeah. two months' time to get back on the list to go to see him again. So they asked to bring in somebody with you. I didn't bring in anybody with me. Um, but I did Who'd ask. You ring? Uh, well, I did ask him four questions at, when, I, when I eventually picked myself up off the ground. Uh, the first one was, and, and a difficult question: Will I die? Did and you actually ask him that? Question? I did, yeah. And uh, he said to me, "No, you won't be okay." Second question I asked him was, uh, "What choices do I have?" And he said, "Well, you can go down and have some radiation, or you can get it out completely." Third question I asked him, "What would you do if I told you you had prostate cancer?" And he said to me that he would, he would get it out completely. Right. He wouldn't hang around, just get it out. Yeah. And that he would actually go to to Germany to a, a professor in Germany because. Uh, they do nine a week. This guy in Germany does nine a week. My consultant was only doing one a week. Right. And if you're going to go to somebody who's doing nine a week, he's, he's done five and a half thousand of them seemingly yeah. over the years, so he's like second and half. How is it an option for somebody in Ireland to go to Germany? Um, they, they hadn't got... Uh, it was robotic surgery, and yeah. we hadn't got robotic surgery in Ireland at the time. It's only just coming into the Mount mm. Hospital at the moment. So... Uh, the VHI will pay for you. Okay, really? Yeah. I send you to Germany. Yeah. And did you have to go over in advance of the treatment, or is it just fly in? Fly in and fly out. Really? Um, so, well, I mean, what, if we just backtrack there a little to when it, when uh, I, he, he said, look, you know, you, you've got the choices. Yeah. Radiation, other choices, or get it out completely. I was, well, I was happy enough with the I just want it out of me yeah. syndrome. And then the last question I asked him was, because I knew when I left his office that I'd have loads of questions to ask. And I'd probably be on a waiting list to go back in and see him. So mm. I asked if he could give me the telephone number of a patient who had been to Germany. Mm. So I could sit down with that per patient and, uh, and chat for an hour. Yeah. And have all the questions answered. Right, perfect idea. Uh, and I did that. And I got in touch with that person two days later. And for those two days waiting were just horrible. Right. I mean, just 
coming into work, yeah. doing your radio show, and going home, and just complete darkness. Mm. You've got loads of questions, you're writing yeah. all the questions you want. But when I met this person who had been to Germany, had the operation two years ago, uh, and asked all the questions, my life turned around. Really? Yeah. I knew I could do this. Yeah. I knew I was now, it was now, I called it an adventure. I knew I'd be okay. I knew I could go there, have the, have the operation, and, and, be, and be back on the radio as quick as possible. The, the big questions people would wonder about is lasting effects. And I know you've kind of uh, had a joke about your sex life returning to normal very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Do we still have sex lives? <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were just loud, all that kind of stuff. But, um, but, but also, isn't there issue with uh, the waterworks? Okay, well, here, uh, there, here's, one, here's what happens. If you leave it too late, yeah. if you're leaving it too late to make a decision, I'll come back in six months or whatever yeah. and see how it goes. Um, the, pro the cancer in is only contained inside the prostate. Yeah. If it starts to move outside of the prostate, yeah. you've got problems. Okay. If it moves into the nerve endings, yeah. which allows you to have a proper right. sex life, you've got problems. Okay. So the trick is catch it early. Right. Be proactive. Get it out so it doesn't affect the nerve endings yeah. and you won't have a problem then. Okay, you're back. You know, we can't say too much. It's only <laughs> 11.31. You're back. You're back. It's good news, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that is, that is the advice. Don't wait. The, I mean, the big don't thing let it go me, into the nerve The big thing coming to be listening to you is that you are remarkably proactive mm -hmm. with doctors and uh, not willing to be fobbed off. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, as a result, if you had been fobbed off, if you'd come back six months later... Well, I asked the professor in Germany this. I said, um... Because uh, I... I, I he, he, I eyeballed him at the end, and I said, am I okay? Because this is the last yeah. day of leaving the hospital. And they were great over there. You know what the Germans are like. They're just yeah. so efficient. Yeah. And I just said, am I okay? And he goes, you, we, there's no, no, no tablets now for you, Tony. Good luck. Mm -hmm. There's no course of treatment. Have you been in any pain since the operation? I had not been in any pain, and I'm telling you the truth. It's incredible. Not one tablet, no course of treatment, mm -hmm. and no pain since I left that, since the operation and left that hospital. And will I be okay? And he said, you'll be grand. You'll have a great life and a healthy long life. And um, you will, uh, if you left it, mm -hmm. if you left it four or five weeks, yeah. you would have had serious problems. Wow. So... What a that hit home to me. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really. A uh, window uh, like that. Get in. It's such get, a short get it time. Get Oh my hang God! Around. If anyone is listening to us and you reach a certain age, you have to make the move and uh, and force your doctor. Be proactive mm -hmm. and uh, don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. Tony, fascinating tale. Mm -hmm. um, it's great that you were back on the radio and back in in great form. As you, you know, the fifty years left in you, really, isn't there? Well, I mean, I just celebrated the. 30th anniversary of my 20th, really. So, uh, <laughs> that was only this year. That's the halfway mark. <laughs> Where is it going? Well, I'm looking forward to plenty more nights out with you and Paul Buchanan if he ever makes it back to Ireland. Oh, I'd love to see him again, I have to say. Oh, Tony, by the way, by yes. the way, when I was doing all of that, um, before I went, we do have a bit of time, do we? Before, that, yeah. Okay, but just before I went to, uh, to Germany and, and had that treatment, I had some bioenergy treatment, which is, it locks all, it unblocks the energy within you. We're You've yeah. got energy outside us, and there's yeah. energy inside. And my mother went through this, and she she felt amazing. Really? So I went to Celtic Healing. I got four bioenergy sessions, and I f and and I also had some sessions when I was in Germany as well. Right. And I think that absolutely helped me Celtic, completely. Great. Yeah. Look into that. Celtic Healing, bioenergy. Yeah. Tony, lovely talking to you this morning. Thanks very much Tom, for joining. Thank you. A pleasure as always.